after buying Naringa, the first job was to create a mast raising system. It uses only equipment on the boat apart from a small rope bridle. Few bolts installed on the cabin top attached to the halyards and the rope bridle to stabilise the mask and the spinnaker pole. The halyard and sheet attaches to the top of the spinnaker pole allowing the sheet winch to be used to lift, the, lift and lower the mast. The whole process can be done on the trailer or on the water if low bridges are encountered while sailing. The V-berth forward is functional but lacks storage space. In the next few weeks, net lockers and an additional reading light will be installed. One of our first projects was to install an electric macerating toilet. It has been plumbed in to allow the use of salt water for flushing when on the water or fresh water when on the trailer or dried out. A one inch waste pipe runs to the rear of the boat to a 40 litre waste tank installed on one of the shelves next to the outboard motor. In the adjacent locker, a second macerator pump and valve allows pumping out to sea when allowed or through a deck fitting tool at waste disposal stations. Hooks installed inside the toilet compartment allow for the hanging of wet coats freeing up the adjacent wet locker to be used for storage. Several simple shelves mounted on side rails dramatically increase the storage functionality of this area. Naringa has a spacious saloon with lots of storage compartments but often with awkward shapes. A shelf unit around the television and various shelves and containers in storage spaces improve functionality and access. The galley, although functional, is quite small and lacking bench space. This fold-out table provides more room for food preparation and presentation. Filter units for both fresh and salt water are located at the back of the galley cupboard. This allows access for cleaning. The Maxi Marine stove is securely held in place by over centre latches. The stove can be easily unlatched and moved when more bench space is required. A 12 volt pressure pump provides water to the galley and to a wash down tap in the cockpit. Valves on the side of the sink have been installed to allow changing the pump from fresh water to salt or between the two water tanks. The sink, although usable, is awkwardly placed. This collapsible trough formality used on the companionway step makes for easier wash-ups and stores away easily next to the sink. The original RL28 icebox is a great unit that can be converted into a spacious fridge freezer with the installation of an isotherm refrigeration unit. For around $1,000 I now have a 110 litre fridge. The short wall at the element end creates a small freezer section that keeps meat and ice cream frozen. The compressor is mounted on the rear of the icebox in the space under the cockpit. So far the ventilation of this space has proved adequate for the unit. Two 110 amp hour batteries are housed under the cockpit instead of using up valuable locker space. The switchboard will be eventually replaced but currently is quite functional. All switches, circuit breakers, stereo, charge controller and 240 volt power are conveniently placed in the one location. To date the two 80 watt solar panels permanently installed on the davits provide ample power to the boat. They keep the batteries well above 12 volts even with quite generous use of power. The davits that came with the boat are homemade from 38mm stainless steel tubing. Originally installed on the outside of the push pit, they were supported only by four U-bolts and require considerable modification and strengthening. They were moved to the inside of the push pit and securely bolted to the deck. U-bolts were replaced and two additional braces were added to provide strength and support. Two brackets were made to strengthen the bends where poorly drilled holes had weakened the structure.
Instruments added to the boat include a low Rance Elite 5 Ti chart plotter, a Clipper wireless wind instrument, and a Clipper Duet combined depth and log. The mounting locations were chosen to allow sufficient space to accommodate the rear of each instrument and its wiring. A quick release masthead bracket holds the wireless wind unit, allowing it to be removed for transport. Two Lumar port lights were installed at the rear of the cabin to provide additional light, visibility and ventilation. A 30 litre Hulk fuel tank from Whitworth was installed. This combined with a 9.9 .9 horsepower 4 stroke Mercury motor and a high thrust 4 blade solace propeller gives a range of around 100 nautical miles travelling at 4 to 5 knots. Tie down straps in the cockpit have been installed to provide for additional fuel storage. An outboard motor bracket has been installed at the rear of the boat to accommodate the dinghy motor. This has several benefits. The motor can be used as an auxiliary to Naringa and it allows the motor to be lifted off using the davits and to be lowered to facilitate transfer to the dinghy. The nose cone on the RL28 is crowded and quite a challenge to make functional. Instead of replacing it completely, I ground off the flanges and bolted on a stainless ankle bracket to a house the 11 kilogram Mountain Supreme anchor. The mooring cleat is offset to the right of this bracket whilst the furling drum is offset to the left. The front stray is attached to the anchor bracket via a shackle. Furling is achieved via a Ronstan trailer sailor furling drum and swivel whilst keeping the forestay. A furling foil made from a cable brace electrical conduit allows for true reefing but also provides for a flexible foil that can be taken down easily even when on the water. The boat came with a self-tacking jib. It makes beating to windward a simple task, but is restrictive in that it doesn't allow for the use of a genoa and can be awkward in setting sails for downwind work. A permanently mounted telescoping boarding ladder at the front of the boat is one of the best additions I have made in a while. It allows the boat to be nosed into sandy shores with easy access on and off the boat. A sail bag and lazy jacks came with the boat, but are definitely a useful addition. They make for easy sail deployment and recovery and protect the sail from some damage when not in use. The lazy jacks can be used to hoist the boom during setup, making it easier to attach to the mast. A good quality bimini is a worthwhile addition. Installation is simple, but positioning must be done carefully to accommodate the boom forward and the mast when trailering. The trailer is set up for self-loading. The guide posts and self-centering sliders at the rear of the trailer push the boat into the centre whilst the red self-centering roller towards the front helps to centre the bow as it comes forward. A four-wheel drive winch pulling through a single block brings the boat easily onto the trailer. Mounted on top of the winch post, it still allows the use of the manual winch if needed. It uses a synthetic winch rope, which is excellent and doesn't kink like steel cable. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This will be the first of a series of videos over the next few years as further improvements are made to Naringa. Thanks for watching.